Today on Locked On Red Wings, Detroit plays well against the Rangers, but not well enough. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ news radio podcast. Well, Scotty's the host over at Lockdown Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And, well, we're bringing you this episode right after it ends. We're recording this, what, maybe 20 minutes after it finally ended. We just got our stuff together. We talked talk about what we wanted to talk about, and here we are recording. And so emotions are still pretty raw. Regarding this hockey game, uh, disappointing, I think, is the is the key word. You know, back in the earlier in the season, we were trying out a couple different things to start episodes with. We started with like one word, right? With one word to describe this game. I think disappointing is the chief word I would use, mainly because even though they played, they played the, the best team in the hockey in the hockey league, right? The best team in the NHL, the New York Rangers, they played them well, they played them tight. It came down to one goal as a difference, but it wasn't enough and you needed those two points so desperately because both the flyers and the capitals lost tonight. And if they had picked up two points, all you need is one of those two teams to lose, by the way, not both. All you need is one team to lose and for you to pick up two points and yet have been back in the wild card. But instead all three teams lost. And it brings me back to my main point that this team is allergic to making up ground in playoff races. So it is disappointing. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I think frustrating is a good word. It, it's just, um, you know, how earlier in the year, and especially in January, we were saying, you know, they don't ask how, they they ask how many, you know, and that obviously line that has been used in a lot of places. But um, that goes the same for losses too, <laughs> right? Like, Yes, obviously, this is one of the best teams in the entire NHL, the best team in the yeah. league this year. And they played them really hard. And that's, I, I guess, a, a good sign that they didn't get destroyed with their season on the line and whatnot. But at the end of the day, they lost in regulation. And that's that's all there is to it. And you're at a point in the year where mm -hmm. nobody cares who right. how good or bad your competition is. You just need to win as many games as possible. And at the end of the day, they didn't. So it's it's uh it's a weird game to kind of talk about and be at because if this game happens in November, I think we just brush it off. We just go, all right, well, Rangers are, you know, the best team in the league. Let's, you know, whatever, let's move on, head held high, let's go into next game and and try to, you know, rebound. And because it's happening right now with the season on the line, which does matter, I'm not saying that that shouldn't be taken into account. It it should. Um, I'm just saying because of the the situation, it just it doesn't really matter. Like it just you, you lost in regulation, and that sucks. And the only sa silver lining and saving grace is that pretty much everybody else in the wild card race also lost yet again. So you're but still pretty much even with anybody. That's not a saving grace anymore. Like I, I said, I agree with you. I agree. Ago, I agree. like you, you, it, it's frustrating at this point, how many days the Red Wings play and the teams that they're chasing lose and the Red Wings don't take advantage. And again, like you said, you said in November, we would have, we'd have brushed it away. We want to brush it away. We would have praised this game. Because sure. of how good the Red Wings played. Because they did play a really good game, again, against the best team in the NHL. But that's not enough anymore. You got to come away with the points. Especially when the two teams you're chasing. The, the, the Islanders moved into the third in the Metropolitan because the Flyers lost. Like, that's how right. vital this is right now. There are five teams right now in the Eastern Conference within two points of one another fighting for that final wild card. And you were the only Atlantic Division team in that mix. If you want to expand that to four points, then you have the Buffalo Sabres in that mix as well. But their their path to the playoffs is much harder because they're three more points back. It's well, just you play them Sunday. So <laughs> right. And so like it gets to a point where it's like, okay, it's good that both the Flyers and the Capitals lost, and you still have that game in hand on the Flyers, but you gotta get the points. And now six games remaining. It's just like it, and that's the that's the most frustrating part, right, Scotty? Like you keep coming on here and you keep, we talk about losses. Like they've lost how many, they lost seven straight 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 losses with four wins in that time. So, like, what is that? They've lost 13 of their last 17 games, a couple of those in overtime. But, like, the way they're losing hockey games now is different than the game way they were losing games during the seven-game losing streak. In the seven-game losing streak, they forgot how to play hockey. They were getting their doors blown off. Yeah. They've lost three games in this stretch where they're one and five. And three of those games, they could have won. The Capitals game was very also close. against really good teams. <laughs> yeah. The Capitals, oh, I'm sorry, let me add another one. You you lost the Predators one to nothing. You played them very well. Didn't get any points. The Capitals took them to overtime, got one point. The Panthers took them to overtime, got one point. The Rangers fell by one to the best team in the league. Like, the losing games now is different than how they were losing games in the past because now they're playing hockey again, but they still aren't getting rewarded. Like they beat the it's, lightning um, for it too. It's more yeah. painful now even. Yeah. Actually. Like <laughs> the, it, it's a different kind of pain. I wouldn't say more painful, like watching them totally fall out of the playoff race. Yeah. I guess given where lead. they were in the standings. Yes. I guess I've just been strictly on the ice. I, I would. Yeah. But like, now they're just not getting rewarded for how well they are playing. Like, yeah, they got rewarded against the Lightning, but they could have gotten two points against the Panthers, two against the Capitals. They could have gotten two against the Predators, and they just are lucky to get one. And it's just... But they need to get over the hump, too. Like, you, that that's the point. Like, you need to win hockey games. I, and, and this is obviously broader than just this game in a vacuum, and we, we do have to talk about this game in a vacuum, obviously, but... You know, at, at the end of the day, like that, you you do have to figure it the heck out, man. Like right. you, you have to to figure out how to get over that hump. And, and there's just enough wrong in each. Not like they're playing flawless, obviously. Like there's enough wrong in each game that you go, well, that, <laughs> you, you know, you, you let that one slip away or you couldn't fight back because of X, Y, and Z. And um. Yeah, given the situation, that's a really tough time of year to, to 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 have a stretch of games like that. Yeah, so I think officially it would be three eleven and two in their last sixteen is that's what their awesome. record is. Just fantastic. And with that, they're still one point back at the second wild card. Yeah, that, and that's the craziest absolutely part. Absolutely like, absurd. Loss after loss after loss, and they're still there. Yeah, it's like it's like put me to pasture already. You know. Like, let you know, put, let, that let was what I said. What was that two through. weeks ago? That was the analogy I made, man. <laughs> you want to take one shot or 15 to the chest and <laughs> bleed out like that's it's the money ball scene. It literally is like just just pick one, e either make a run and, and give us postseason hockey or just stop. Just please. <laughs> the, 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 it's, it's like nagging, just the, the constant. Oh, we're, we're not technically out of it. It's just, it's so exhausting. Just pick a side of the aisle for the love of everything. Right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyways, Scotty, difference maker in this hockey game. At eight minutes into the episode, I mean, it's seven minutes of content of riffing about the, the situation. Still good. Uh, the uh, Mine's David Perron in particular. And this is weird because I felt like all game he was not playing well. And then you, you log on the natural stat trick after the game. You see he was one of their better players in this game. You know, 60% expected goals, four percentage, 55 at Corsi, four percentage. Like they're getting more shot attempts than shot attempts against when he's on the ice. But I felt like every single time I watched him out there, he's getting hemmed in along the boards, like in swing puck battles where in the past, that would be where he thrived, winning those puck battles and protecting the puck. It felt like every single time he'd lose that puck battle or have it just out of his reach and it would come back down the other way. And then, of course the high sticking penalty he took. And I talked last week about the pension that David Perron has for taking just dumb penalties at bad times. And in that game, I would defended that call that he drew. Cause I said it was weak. Well, in this game, it's like, you got to be able to control your stick better. And it just seems to always be David Perron who draws the penalty at the wrong time, which then led to the ensuing goal in the third period. That would be the backbreaker. So I, David Perron, you're my difference maker in this game, buddy. Sorry. Yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't disagree. I think the biggest point that you mentioned there and, and when we were talking during the game was the consistent inability to win board battles and, oh, and he wasn't the only one. Not the, no, that was, that was the entire team, but um, that's something that, you know, Peron is a, is a puck protector and, and is somebody that 
uh, you kind of, at least to some extent, rely on for that type of stuff. But um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't disagree with any of that. Cool. Do you want to save your difference maker for segment two? Yeah, I might as well. I don't want to have a 13 minute first break. So sounds good. We'll uh, head to segment two. When we come back, Scotty will give his difference maker and we'll head on to notable, notable performances. So stay tuned for that in segment two of lockdown Red Wings. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA. Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% local boost on your every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even bo boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood gold for one year from the date of the first 3% first match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty, you got to give us your difference maker. Yeah, uh, you know. We were kind of talking off air. Uh, this is a weird game for difference maker because th there were certainly a few key moments and key plays that swung the game one way or another, but it was uh, a pretty tight hockey game throughout. I, I was kind of going back and forth between uh, what I'm going to end up choosing is the final power play at the end of the game that they failed on. But I also thought that uh, when the wings went up three, two, and then immediately gave up a goal, what, 15 seconds later to make it three, three, that that probably uh, was was my my next in contention. My next in line there was going to be that because I think that really you had a lot of momentum after that Larkin goal and kind of just took the wind out of your sails, giving it back so easily. So um, that that's going to be my you know cheating. I'll I'll pick you know like one and a half or two. But I, I do think that that power play at the end of the game, man, like you, it wasn't just the fact that you were on. What is happening? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> um, not the time. OK, not the time um, it uh, it wasn't just the fact that you were on a power play at the end of the game. It was the fact that you almost scored like twice. Right. Like they they did have an opportunity. They had they had good opportunities um, to hit the back of the net. Perron hit the right. stick. Uh, uh, he, I mean, just not not much you can do about that. But would have wiped away all his sins. Right. <laughs> Obviously. Um, I just, you know, bad break after, and I'm not trying to make it sound like they lost because they were like unlucky. Like they, they got outplayed at the end of the day, but, um, uh, yeah, that, that power play specifically, man, like that was, that was an opportunity to, uh, a real opportunity. Raymond had the puck on his stick in front of the net at one point. Um, they, they had a couple of opportunities to tie the game there and didn't. So, yeah. Speaking of Raymond, there was some brutal officiating there in the first period. Huh? Oh my gosh. I don't need to make this about officiating, but you give Fabry an extra two minute minor, right? On that fight. And then the, you get a power play after you kill that penalty off and Raymond gets absolutely destroyed with a cross check to the back. Doesn't get a call right in front of the ref. Everyone in the rink, including the commentators are like, how do you not call that? And then in the second period, who who was that? Petrie that drew the, the cross check. Yeah. Which I didn't have a problem with cross check in that situation. Line didn't handle the rebound very properly, and Petrie was just taking the guy out. I I didn't have a problem with penalty in that situation. But you call that a cross check where the one against Raymond was just as egregious. I that that was peak game management. Oh well, we just gave you a power play, so we're not going to make it a five on three. That's what yeah. that was ridiculous. Uh, but we don't need to make this a, 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 a officiating show. I agree with you about. I mean, this was, again, and I don't want to talk in circles, but this was one of those games where it was a good game for both teams. Now, I have my problems with how the Red Wings played, but they played good enough to make it a one-goal loss to one of the best teams in the league that's trying to clinch a President's Trophy and the number one seed in the East. So, like, there's still stuff to fight for for the Rangers. This wasn't them taking their foot off the gas, and you still 
only lost by one goal. But because of that, it makes it hard to choose a difference maker because there's a lot of things moving in this game. So what it comes down to is just the, the third period and the two two things that really made the biggest difference. And that was Perron's power uh, penalty leading to a power play goal against and not scoring on your own. Uh, in terms of notable performances, Scotty, first and foremost, uh, Dylan Larkin scored his 30th goal of the season. And he has, what, like 67 games played? He would have had 40 goals on this season if he if would have stayed healthy. If you prorate it. Got, yeah, if you prorate it. Now, I actually haven't prorated it. I'm just assuming that he'd score 40 goals because he's he's scoring goals at a higher clip than he did last year. He's been great. Of course, he's the first. It's the first time a Red Wing has scored 30 goals in three consecutive well, seasons since Henrik actually. Zetterberg in 08 and 09. Quick math, but 86, 30 and 67, you said? Uh, 61. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, he's probably. 62. 30 and 62. Never mind. Then that's that's like right at, you know, at about 40. He'd be yeah. at 39 or 40, yeah. And so he's got 60. 61 points in 62 games. He's still getting point per game. It's yeah. just, it, it's really frustrating that year after year, Larkin loses so much time due to injury. Not because, not his own fault. Like we know what happened this year, right? Like he took that nasty cross check, double cross check to the, the neck and the head that knocked him out literally. Uh, and then the other injury that happened last month. So, but he's been fantastic. First Red Wing to have uh, three consecutive 30 goal seasons since Henrik Zetterberg in 08 09. That's pretty good company to be in. Pretty darn good. Yeah, no, and, and you know, for as much as when he first came back, I thought that he uh, he was pretty clearly still looking hurt and, and was playing a little slow. I think in this game especially, uh, he was buzzing. I, I thought he looked pretty good, and, yeah, he was, was flying out there mm -hmm. back to, you know, being the best – uh, on the team in zone entry, et cetera, et cetera, kind of looked like he did pre-injury. So that was nice yeah. to see, hopefully, timing-wise, that helps us here in the last few games. Who you got? Um, I, don't, I mean, pick a name, goodness. Uh, we can talk, talk about everyone. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't think uh, – Lion had a fantastic game, but I also think that he got hung out to dry a couple of times pretty, pretty uh, brutally. Um, but I, if he did also let in one, at least pretty clear softy. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, not a, I'm not putting the loss on him, but didn't do uh, wasn't Superman either. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't really impressed, super impressed with Alex Lyon either in this game, and that's too bad because of the fact that he has been playing so so well lately. He finally got rewarded with a win against Tampa Bay, but this game I felt like he wasn't the sharpest. I thought his rebound control was a little bit off, and then the first two goals against I didn't love. Uh, obviously, yeah. that plays into also the fourth line and Shane Gosses Bear and Jake Wellman also being egregious and into what you said with him being hung out to dry uh, Zarnik on the first goal, just not even looking to see if his guy's open and just turns the puck over. You can't pass be doing to that. The other team, not that, even yeah. nobody like genuinely like puck on stick pass to the other. Team. And, and what a way to kill a good start too. Like the Red Wings were yeah. playing well at the start. And thankfully Andrew cop was able to uh, answer very quickly with a beautiful, beautiful effort by Joe Valeno to juke the guy and then feed him out front. But, Zarnik turns the puck over and then it wasn't really that great of a shot from Cooley, right? It was like top of the circle and just beats Alex Lyon with five hole. And then the second goal he allowed waiting seconds of the third cops got to win that face off. He doesn't, uh, copper comfort. I think one of them got kicked out. It, it doesn't. And two kind of half shot attempts taken from the point And then from the hash marks, with not really any mustard on him, beats Alex Lyon with 30 seconds left. Go down turn two to one. The other two goals, I'm not going to kill him on. You know, like I said, I don't, I didn't really love his rebound control, but he made the initial save and he was peppered in this hockey game. Uh, yeah. The third goal, it was another fourth line mistake. And that's why, you know, no performances. I don't think that, I didn't like the fourth line in this game. I've been loving Austin Zarnick, but not in this game in particular. Uh, Jake Wolman and Shane Gosses Bear both covered their guys. Third man in, Barclay Goodrow came back. And nobody covered him. Sprong was there. Zarnik wasn't that far behind, but they stopped skating. Left that guy wide open for a rebound to tie it 30 seconds after Dylan Larkin had gotten the Red Wings their only lead of the game. So the the continued, and this is why Sprong gets scratched. Like just the he he was in the spot, but he stopped skating. He was there. He could have made a play, but he stopped skating. He was watching the puck and he wasn't looking for a guy late back door. 
And he stopped getting Barkley. Goodrow had a free lane for the rebound and to bury it. And the defense side of the puck from the Fords continues to be an issue. Correct. And that is, again, why Sprong gets healthy. That is the reasoning behind the Berger decision that everybody keeps talking about. That is very much an, an underlying theme throughout uh, a lot of decisions that are made on this roster. And you saw it rear its ugly head in this game. Yeah, I mean, you saw game two of Goss, Despair, and Woolman. I kind of hinted at them, too, as part of the reason, like, Lyon got hung out to dry. I, You know what? I, I'm going to stop myself. We're at 20 minutes and 35 seconds as of what it says on our recording. I want to stop myself because talking about Goss, Despair is going to parlay into me talking about Cider and the rest of the defense because I have some major issues with the usage of our defense in this game. So stay tuned to segment three of Lockdown Red Wings. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula of for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Segment three, Locked on Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are about to talk about the defense uh, when it comes to notable performances. So You sounded that. Really, really fun to talk about that. <laughs> well, one pair was really good. It was going to be really fun to talk about. Uh, but I, I hinted at Gossip Bear and, and Woolman here coming into segment three, and they were really bad again. You know, this is the second game in a row as a pair, and I get it. I understand why they're a pair because Sherrod and Pete or Sherrod and Cider have kind of really taken a hold as that top pair after Woolman's absence. Petrie and Edvinson, who are fantastic in this game, have really started to find their groove. So that leaves you with Woolman, Gosses, Bear, Hole, and Mata as your rotation on the bottom pair. And what's your matchup going to be? But they're all offense, zero defense approach is set two games in a row now. And I'm willing, I was willing to give it another game because of the fact that I knew Woolman was sick and not 100%. I mean, they're getting caved in defensively. And they were the two worst players on the team at Corsi 4 percentage. Uh, and they got big minutes too. Like they even started the third period and then immediately almost got scored upon. Big, and like that big leads minutes to is an understatement. Shane Gossespierre led the defense in minutes with 20 minutes and 30 seconds, 36 seconds. Cider was second with total time on the ice, but get this Moritz Cider was fourth on the team in even strength time on the ice, which brings me to my main point here. What the hell? <laughs> it's a great main point. It's a great main point. I, I, I don't, I don't know what the hell I, I don't know. Uh, I, I think it's it's absolutely wild that, and I understand that the power play and and whatnot, whatever. I, I don't care. It is it is wild to me that Shane Gostas Bear led this team in minutes. Period. Nonetheless, or I should say, led had more minutes than most cider. Period. And nonetheless, led the entire team. Right. I understand there were four penalties for and against in this game. So Moritz Sider is your primary penalty kill guy and he plays on the power play. So you would think that that's going to take away from his even strength time. But in reality, he only played 20 minutes and 18 seconds, second to Shane Gosses bear, only a little bit above Petrie and his defensive partner, Sherratt. They just beat the Tampa Bay freaking Lightning. I had to stop myself. They just beat the Tampa Bay freaking Lightning by putting him out there for 25 minutes a night, where he cleared his defensive power partner, Ben Sherratt, by four minutes. They had three days off, and this is a home game where you can control the matchups. So, why are we only giving Moritz Sider 20 minutes a night? It has nothing to do about special teams. Why is Shane Gosses Bear, who you know is a defensive black hole? And I'm sure the reasoning is going to be. Oh, well, we needed a score at the end, and he's your best offensive weapon. I'm sorry. Moritz side is your best all-around defenseman, and if you would put him out there instead of peddling out Jake Woolman and Shane Gossesbear, and I still love Woolman, but if you had Shane Gossesbear and Jake Woolman were both a minus two in this game because they were out there for goals against. And yes, I've covered soft goaltending. I've covered poor defensive efforts from the forwards, 
but it's not not it's not not in part of because of their performance as well. And you keep trotting them out there. It's the same issue we had with Jeff Petrie a couple of games ago, right? Like, why is Jeff Petrie a couple back against Carolina Hurricanes one of your bet, most tenured players on the ice in that hockey game when you have more Sider who's capable and has done so at different points in the season and in this stretch with 25 plus minutes and then against the best team in the NHL you decide to play him just 20 minutes he had 15 minutes going into the second period he played just another five minutes in the third period I don't understand the mindset of a home game after three days off against the best team in the NHL when you need to have two points and then giving Shane Gosses bear the most ice time on the team and not your number one defenseman who was your sixth overall pick and your Calder Trophy winner just two seasons ago. What is the mindset here? Uh, yeah, and uh, again, I, I think you can even take obviously highlighting Mo is, is, you know, makes sense and is part of this conversation, but you can even remove that just in general ghost leading this team in minutes is in a, when you're playing the best team in hockey and you need points every game is, is wild. That, that is just a, a, a really, really wild thing. And, and again, when it's paired with three, four games ago, Jeff Petrie leading the team in ice time, it, it just, I don't know why this is a conversation we have to have like twice a week. Right. And you know what? To their credit, Edvinson and Petrie were great in this hockey game. Yeah, I thought Edvinson was fantastic. really good. And let's not sell Jeff Petrie short either, Scotty, because he stepped up in the play at the start of the second period and played a huge role in tying the game up uh, on JT Comfort's goal. He steps up, goes along the boards, tries a front uh, out front pass, doesn't work, gets the puck back, comes back out front, and just sends it to the net and it goes off conference skate into the back of the net for the goal. Like that was more or less all Petrie on that. And so he had a good game. Simon Edmondson, of course, was really good. Simon Edmondson actually led the team in five on five ice time. Shane Gosses bared the overall lead in ice time, but Simon Edmondson, they entrusted with the most even strength ice time. And he's been, he played a minute 41 of penalty kill ice, uh, penalty kill time as well. And that's second only to Moritz Sider. I'm sorry third to more Sider and Ben Chirot, who are a defensive pair. Like this is a guy who at what, 19 years old, 20 years old, however old he is at this point, might be 21. I think it's 21. Yeah. It comes into the league and is playing big minutes. Like they were a really good pair, which again, just reiterates. Why did Goss despair and Wolman get so much ice time? Edvinson and Petrie were playing so well, bump up the amount of minutes that Sider and Sherrod are having. And maybe you don't have this problem to begin with. And like, there's so many more issues that were going on in this game besides that, right? Like I, I, I focused on the issues with more sight or uh, the fourth, the fourth line. I focused on uh, the goaltending wasn't the greatest. And I didn't even talk about the fact that this team loses every single race to the puck at every 50, 50 battle. But I've talked about that every single episode up, up to this point, but like, you were one goal away from getting two points. Well, I guess re realistically two points, two goals away, but one goal away from getting a point out of this game. And you, you, you handcuffed yourself. Yes. <laughs> I didn't realize that was the end of your point, but yeah, I mean, you, you have, I didn't realize um, it was going to be my point either until I, I got there. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, Oh, I, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, man, it's, uh, it is it is mind boggling how they have managed to do have a catastrophic collapse, but still do just enough to still hang around. Yeah, I don't know. I know that this third segment totally contradicts probably or makes it sound like I'm contradicting what I was saying in the first segment about this being a good game, but it was a really good game. I was focusing heavily on the negatives. I mean, they were they were neck and neck in terms of shot. They were generating offense and good offensive chances. I don't know why Patrick Kane passed on a shot from the slot with 30 seconds left for a, a contested pass down low, but it is what it is. They had plenty of opportunities to win this hockey game in the offensive zone, and they just couldn't capitalize. And then defensively, it wasn't even defense. It was just crucial mistakes at bad times. Like I didn't even talk about it, but in that penalty kill that scored the fourth goal, Ben Chirac got the puck in the corner and he didn't clear it. He held yeah. on to it and then lost the puck. I don't know why he didn't just ream it off the glass and out. So like it, it was this Zarnik turnover and Sherratt not clearing the puck and Sprung or Zarnik, whoever's fault it was, not covering the third man in. Just like stupid, easy mistakes that you don't have to make 
changes the outlook of this game. Yes. They, they are this close. But at this point, being this close isn't worth much. Correcto. Yep, that's full circle. That's what I said at the beginning. So. Yep. Um, hey, they play Buffalo on Sunday. Ooh. And guess what, Scotty? Buffalo is playing good hockey now. Buffalo has 79 points. They're four points back of the final wild card spot. They're three points yeah. back of you. So this game against Buffalo that shouldn't start matter. To the year, but their second half has been real good. This Buffalo team that that shouldn't shouldn't be anywhere near you is now all of a sudden near you because you can't stop spiraling and nobody wants this wild card spot. But nope. I mean, hey, here's the optimist in me coming back out, Scotty. You ready for this? Please. Ne- next three games are much easier opponents than this road trip and they have huge implications on the playoff race. So if you can sweep these three games, which is a big ask, it's Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and then Washington. I think, yeah. I think that's the order. No, I, you flip two of them, but yeah, it's Buffalo, it's Washington, Buffalo Pittsburgh. Washington, Pittsburgh. Yeah. I mean, those three, those are the three teams that you're in the thick of the playoff race with. Obviously you don't play the Islanders or the Flyers anymore, but those three teams, if you can beat all of those, like you're going to, give yourself a long way to getting yourself into the playoffs and they're not they're not tampa bay they're not the new york rangers they're not the florida panthers but they will be fighting just like you for every single point so just take care of business right it's like i was tweeting all day today just wait. i can't wait for every single team in the race to go one and two in their next three it's gonna be no, awesome I, I can't wait for the final day in the, of the season and every team to be tied with the same amount of points <laughs> well, a four-way right. tie oh <sighs> Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Any final thoughts? We ball. We ball. We'll be back with a new episode on Monday to recap the game against the Buffalo Sabres. Just win. Just win. Please. Stay tuned for that. Same time. Did you say we ball? I did. Same place. Your team. Every day. Every day. Good job.